Good morning, everybody. We have another busy day, as always. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on our corn planter, which will be good. On the weekend there, I went and grabbed all my new blades, and this is all fertilizer stuff. And I gotta check bearings and all that fun stuff on it today. Uh, but before that, I need to go get changed. We need to go do chores. This here is paperwork for our hen house. I got an inspector coming today. They're gonna do a salmonella test in the barn. Uh, make sure our paperwork is up to snuff. Uh, this portion of our business, my mom has been taken care of. She's a lot better at paperwork than I am. <clears throat> so, anyways, let's get to it. Let's go get changed. Let's get to the barn. Okay, I'll see if the inspector will talk with us. She does. That's awesome. If not, sorry. We'll see what goes on. The inspector is here. Highly doubt she's gonna talk on the camera, but likes here picking eggs. So she's just walking through. She's got uh, swabs. She swabs all kinds of spots on the barn and just makes sure there's no salmonella. I believe she's doing a count. She's counting all the birds. Make sure. So I'm just getting back from the barn. Uh, no, she was not willing to talk yet, but she will. Um, she suggests I do email uh, the egg board. She's gonna give me an email address, which is her boss. Um, I am going to start getting the egg board involved in this uh, because I think it's important that you know what else is going on in my barns besides me. You know, she's in there doing the inspections. She seemed really happy with uh, what she's seen. So we're going to go with that. It's time to get to this corn planter. Let's do it. This right here is one of the main reasons why we uh, went with a Kinsey planter. Don't have to be kneeling on the ground. Everything is, you know, right here. Gotta like that. So I'm just gonna kind of go over this planter quick. Now we'll do some checks, check my blade, make sure my blades are in spec. Um, yeah, I gotta replace these. No, uh, the dry fertilizer coulters, they still look half decent. Um, but I know they're at the point that during halfway through the season, they will, uh, this will get too worn and this will get like right here will be too worn out and it'll uh, start stop It'll be stop stop turning in the field and I'll be out here doing adjustments all the time So it's just better to replace it now. I've got two seasons out of it. Just replace it It'll uh, make my life way easier in the field I don't I don't have time to be stopping and screwing around with simple crap like that so Anyways, let's let's get going over here. So obviously I got uh, my liquid fertilizer coulter I got my dry fertilizer coulter. Then we got the shark teeth. And we got no-till coulter right here. Then you got your disc openers. I got the Dawn closing wheel with the stock rubber closing wheel with the drag chain. Uh, this seems to be working really good. Over the years, I've just been YouTubing the crap out of different way people have their planners set up. And this is this seems to be working for me. This is what I like so far. Of course, now there's all the uh, hydraulic downforce. Uh, we even got some hydraulic close furrow force now, I think they call it. I've been watching some people put on that kind of stuff. And maybe the day when I go to a different planter, I will go with that kind of system. Um, but this is a basic, basic planter. The, it's just all ran by the ground. There is a finger pickup unit system in here where a lot of uh, Systems are using air to hold the seed with a plate. So this is just little fingers and it goes around in a circle and just drops the seed down here. Oh, also we got a seed firmer. And right here is an Acura shoe. Now that is supposed to help. It's called capillary action. So if you got some drier soil, it's supposed to help bring up moisture. And uh, there, this way also it won't leave a little bit of a W that uh, your, you know, your openers can leave. But no, I'm really happy with how this planter works. Uh, it was used when we bought it. I was just at the uh, Kinsey dealership yesterday and I seen a really nice, beautiful 16 row, but that isn't in the cards. Um, but yeah, maybe one day we'll go to hydraulic downforce and furrow force and you know high speed stuff. But at this point in my life, this is definitely gonna work. Um, and I will always stick with the Kinsey. Uh, I probably won't ever go much bigger than a 16 row. This is a 12 row. Um, just because I 16 row you can still get the dry fertilizer boxes. I like dry fertilizer and I like my liquid as well I for what I'm for what I'm doing. It's working my program So anyways, let's get to it 
Got a few things to go over. Let's get my bench over here. That's better, okay. So you can clearly see this has got a nice sharp edge and that's pretty dull. So we've lost all, all the meat. So go ahead and change it. Yeah. Check the pan out. Bang, still feels really good. So let's pop these bolts out, put the new blade on. In case you're wondering why I'm using such a big impact as opposed to this little guy, you can blame Snap on. They still can't get me any 3 8 sock. You would think 3 8 sock is easy to get. No, it's not. Unbelievable. Might have to go Mac. Yeah, I'm still happy with that Baron. I mean, seriously, I could just go to Canadian Tire and get 3-8 sockets, but there really is a difference. There's a lot of things I'll use that from Canadian Tire, Mastercraft, but 3-8 uh, sockets from Snap-on are really good. They get into weird spots. But I've only been waiting since January. Not even a word of a lie. Unbelievable. Okay, we're gonna put a little anti seize on this bushing. So when I take it off next time, it's not seized. I can see I did it last time and it just fell out of there, so that was nice. Okay, so now we have to adjust this shoe. So 
So the top does the bottom. I gotta figure it out again. It's kind of finicky how you adjust, but once once you get it adjusted, it works out pretty good. Let me get her a little closer. So you see we have a little gap in there. The top will force that down. And actually you just, you would think it should run freely, that's not the case. You actually want a little bit of drag. That's right in the instructions and it tells you that. So that should work pretty good. So if you're not drag, you get dirt and stuff stuck in behind there and it won't turn. It'll stop turning on you. But there's one. Good thing is this is the only thing I have to replace. I put new ones of these on how a couple years ago. But they look fine. They're good until they'll get like a little bit of a C going on. So they'll be good for this year. Last year I put new openers on it and a new no-till coulter. Every year I try to put on something new instead of doing it all at once. All right, time lapse time. Let's get uh, get to it. All right, so I have to on and get my tool kit. I can't keep changing stuff. We need things ready to go. All right, let's get to it. Okay, that's the first six done. I'm gonna go and put uh, my shoes here. I'm gonna do the other side. That's probably enough of a time lapse. Then we'll get into making sure my openers are at the proper gap. And just check some more bearings out. But I, realistically, I checked this plant before uh, I put it away. I knew I need to do what I'm doing right now, so it should be a pretty simple look over. So I started my first blade on the other one, checked this bearing, and it's done. So, went and got new bearings, and I decided I'm going to take those six I just put on there, peel them off, put new bearings in them, because if there's one bearing gone, these all did the exact same amount of acres. So, I know for sure one thing. It's not if it's gonna fail, it's when it's gonna fail. So. One failed, they're all probably not far behind it. They could last a thousand acres, they could last a hundred acres, I don't care. Peace of mind, let's press it out. So obviously when you're pressing a bearing back in, you shouldn't be pressing on the center because you'll be putting pressure on the balls. So this is the old bearing. I took the torch, cut all the center out, tacked a piece up here so it's the exact same size so we could press it on the outside collar. Um, if you are using a torch to pull uh, or to torch a bearing, please make sure you be careful that the grease will catch fire. And you gotta be fully careful, wear a face shield, Wear some long sleeve shirts, 
It's important. Let's press this back in. Fantastic. One to 12 done now. All right, now I'm just gonna go and do them all. You get the point. Then we'll carry on with the rest of the planter. So while I'm putting new bearings into blades I've already done, uh, Owen and Wes have been making feed. Uh, they've been in the pull-up barn, which obviously the flock just went out of. They're just getting, make sure the feed's out of the feeders. It's gotta get blown out, you know, that way. It, it, if there's no food in there, rodents don't seem to want to go in there when there's no birds. So it's important to keep up on that. Anyways, he's back in here now. He's going to grease the planter. So here we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to go over is my blade to blade contact and make sure that's proper before we start the season. We need an inch to inch and a half of blade contact. Now most people say business cards, but uh, all I got is beer case. So we got our pieces of cardboard in there. We're just going to measure. We're good on that one. We'll just do the rest of them. Other than that, I think we're just about ready. Okay, new blades are on. It is greased. I have checked all the clearances on my disc openers. I have oiled all the chains. I just like to use a Polaris, well, it's just Polaris uh, chain lube for bikes. It could be Yamaha, I don't really care. Any ATV lubricant that's not supposed to be too sticky for uh, dirt and all that stuff seems to work well for myself. Anyways, it's good to go. So with this planter, I guess the last thing I gotta do, make sure I got enough cotter keys. Um, go through my toolbox, make sure I got tools. I need to put the liquid on the three-point hitch here. Um, for this planter, you can't just put a three-point hitch. I had to make an extension uh, so we can turn without hitting this piece. Also, there's two types of tongues for a Kinsey planter. There's a T-tongue and an eye tongue, I think, or something like that. Anyways, this is this was set up so you could have inner plant. So I ended up cutting this all apart, putting this piece, narrowing it up so we could put our cultures here to have clearance. Okay, so the very last thing I'm going to do here is I'm gonna check tire pressure of the corn planter and I write it all down on the rims, what uh, pressures are. The pressure on the outside tires are different than the center tires. This is extremely, extremely important though to have your uh, drive tire and your driven tire, the exact PSI that's in the manual, 50 PSI for the little guy. I just said 40 down here. This is what controls your seed population and your fertilizer population. So when they design this planter, these tire pressures really mean something. So we're gonna go ahead, put pressure in there, double check the tractor, fold this baby up, get it out of here, get the air seeder in, oh, sorry. We are gonna put the liquid on this. We're gonna get 100% hooked up, field ready, pointed in the right direction. Uh, Cause it's coming fast. I mean, I'm still not too much in a hurry. I don't even have seed yet. I just called everybody today. Uh, seed's gonna start coming today, tomorrow. We still need uh, our chemical for uh, spraying. Anyways, let's get to it. Yep, see we only have 30 PSI, we need 40. This loses a little bit over the winter time. Um, a little more. Perfect. 
perfect. Change of plans. Excavator showed up. Sorry. Excavator showed up to pull that big stump out. So we're going to go watch that. That's still just a baby one. There's the big one. too. So we're just gonna move this into our bush out of the way. It's cool. Let's go dump that and then we'll deal with this baby here. She's five feet wide. Yeah, well they're moving stumps. I'm just kind of cleaning up a few sticks that are sitting on the top of the field here. And we'll scoop this pile of shrapnel up and dump it too.
<laughs> oh yeah, that made her move. Cool. Okay, so now we just got a few piles of sticks to keep hauling to the bush. And all this topsoil, he's gonna spread out, make it all nice and smooth again. So we'll be able to farm this. That's pretty sweet. Time to get the saddle tanks. Straight back, straight in. Keep coming, keep coming. Oh yeah, you're getting her. Okay, hold it right there. Whoa, we can get that one in over there. Okay. This is why we only hook it up once a year. <laughs> safety pinned. Now most times I do this when the planter's not hooked up, but to be honest with you, it was way easier to hook up the planter and use the forklift to put this on. Now, there's definitely other options, like 360 yield threatens to make that really nice unit to go right here for a 7000 series tractors, but they haven't yet. So I ended up making this, this is what's working for me. There's probably better systems out there, but I'm happy with it. Just like Gold Rush, except instead of digging for gold, we're making ground for corn and soybeans. Okay, that's all I got for you guys today. We'll uh, finish up the corn flare tomorrow. Have a good night. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace. <laughs>